Thank you very much. So this is a short talk that uh, was triggered by a discussion yesterday, relatively late evening or even early morning, uh, about something that I felt gets not the attention it deserves when talking about fourth, in particular, talking about fourth to um, uh, fourth beginners. And uh, that is sort of what is what is involved when we're talking about fourth is really good at creating domain specific languages. Um, and uh, of course, uh, these languages are really, really nice, really powerful, but they also come at a price. They do involve a challenge. And uh, that's just something I want to highlight a little bit here. Um, the uh, canonical Spider-Man quote, I think, um, is, um, is in order here. With great power comes great responsibility. And uh, I found another quote um, almost to my liking or, to, or almost fitting here in uh, the DAO of programming. I tweaked it a little bit, um, a well-designed language that speaks of a well-designed program is its own heaven, a poorly designed language is its own hell. And um, the application to creating domain specific languages, I think, is that it's not the easiest thing on earth to actually design a good language, to design a language in the first place, but especially design a good language. Um, and this is just something I think that's worth being aware of um, and worth talking about. And of course, design is a really, really valuable skill, and, uh, but not, not one that one that just drops into one's lap but uh, a skill that develops over time and needs time and effort to develop. Um, which brings me to, I think the need for design work in fourth isn't talked about enough or highlighted enough or appreciated enough. Um, and I find that I need a significant amount of design work almost in every word that I write. Um, or else the, the stack would have me for breakfast. Uh, and we've had uh, mentions of this basic fact of fourth life a few times in this conference already. Um, I just find that in fourth, I need to th really think about, um, about code much more and much more carefully uh, at a level that I would just write down uh, in, if I were coding in C or in Python. Um, this is not in itself a bad thing about, uh, about fourth, but it's one that I think one needs to know and um, that's worth being aware of. Um, so the impact, impact of putting in this, this design effect, um, if you're doing it well, I find you really um, um, you really can end up with exceptionally expressive code. So uh, that is the, the the fourth code that you look at and you smile. You find yes, this is telling you exactly what's happening. Um, basically, the, the the code tells the story of how stuff is stuff is done. Um, and if you're not putting in this design effort, that is when you. I think end up with the uh, proverbial sometimes write only uh, write only code that can really make your your life miserable. And I think that beginners, fourth beginners, should be told this: that uh, this is, I believe, one of the properties of the language. Um, and I think um, so. What I'm talking against here a little bit is the, I think, sometimes too easily um, claimed, fourth is easy. Um, I think beginners should be told that there is a need for, for design and for design effort much earlier than in many other languages, because otherwise people will be frustrated because they'll find this out soon enough anyway. And uh, <clears throat> if this comes 
under the label, well, or under the impression, uh, this is supposed to be easy um, and the facts don't match. Um, I don't think that's a, that's a good, good experience. And I think it's not a very rare experience to sort of detect this kind of mismatch between expectation and reality. Um, so a few thoughts on, on what I think one should acknowledge when, especially with, with regard to, to fourth beginners, but in general also to, uh, um, or especially with uh, regard to people coming from other languages. Um, the, there is an absence of a syntax handrail in fourth. So fourth has almost no syntax. And in many cases, in other languages, the, the syntax can be your handrail, sort of guiding you how to structure your code. Um, and uh, this gives you flexibility, of course, but to mitigate this lack of handrail, you need to put in design work. Um, there's also the, the absence of uh, type check and other uh, guardrails that um, structured or strongly typed compilers um, in other languages tend to give you more than fourth compilers or fourth systems tend to do. Um, also something I think that just needs to be acknowledged. Uh, I think it's a fact of, uh, fact of the language. Uh, and being an old Ench prodder, uh, my answer there is, of course, uh, you need to do more testing uh, in fourth to, to mitigate that, just as you need to do more testing in uh, Python than you need to do in Java. Um, and more testing in JavaScript than you need to do in well-written C or something, um, just because fewer things get caught in, in compile time. So you need to catch them in testing. Um, you do get really, really great flexibility and, and freedom with fourths, but they can also be a challenge. Again, something that I think should just be acknowledged. Um, and uh, um, sort of my conclusion there is that fourth is easy in some ways and hard in other ways. Um, and uh, one great implication of that is, of course, it's a great, uh, a great field for, for growing your design muscles. Um, I've spent probably half of my time of two years in university <clears throat> trying to trying to hone my uh, hone my design skills with uh, Leo Brody and a few other books, fourth books from the from our university library in my hand, um, and I do think uh, that effort from back then still impacts my my uh, development developing from uh, uh, as of today, but it needs to be done, or uh, you won't enjoy fourth very much. And with that, I would open for comments, criticism, opinions. Thank you very much, Philip. Are there any questions in Twitch? Please type them now. And there are already some hands up. Martin Bitter, please go ahead. Okay. I fully agree with you. And uh, I would like to ask you if the slides were somewhere to be downloaded uh, and yes I, I fully be... agree with you uh, maybe we should start for beginners with you are the inventor of a new language and please think of Esperanto uh, if you ever heard about it how would you personally Esperanto would look like to describe the coming programming problem and I think that's a very good starting point, and uh, I thank you. So the, the slides will go to Anton after, right after this talk, and I guess via Anton into the um, slide uh, directory in the on the website. Thanks for okay. For, thank you. Okay, thank you, Martin. Um, Stephen Pelk, please go ahead. I have two comments really. One one is thank you for raising yet again the idea that notation matters, which has been a hobby horse of mine for many years. Because 
one of the differences between well written forth and badly written forth is whether you can understand the phrasing and a lot of that comes down to the choice of word names um, second point which I think is which only came to me about 10 or 15 years ago was that forth is not easy having trained a fair number of fourth programmers over my career the what I notice is that without fail it's only good programmers who, mar who master fourth if you're not already a good programmer you aren't going to cut it with fourth it's the problem with fourth is that it's far too subtle as a language and the subtleties lead you lead you down rabbit holes from which you never emerge you know it's a bit it's rather like the category of university student who fails because he couldn't find a good enough word processor and decided to write his own you know fourth is full of similar traps and but so i think in a sense we ought to give up on the idea of telling people that fourth is easy what we should be do doing is saying are you good enough to use fourth okay. uh, that's th that and that that's the sales pitch if you like one of the things I was taught at university on that one marketing course I did was advertise your worst feature <laughs> I like I like that idea I would I would give your um, uh, I think I, can, I, I agree with you. I would, would give the um, it's only good programmers who can master forth a bit of a twist um, because I think you can use forth to become a good or a better, much better programmer. That's um, true. That is certainly you have true. To, you have to put in the dedication and the work and the time and the brain. And you have to spend time with, you actually have to do jobs with yeah. fourth program with other fourth programmers because i mean it, it and sometimes the lessons are uh, not what you expect I, I spent several months working with alongside a programmer called dean sanderson from fourth inc and dean is one of the great application programmers of all time and i was astonished to find that his code is littered with variables and then I realized that in the context in which he was programming, there were no threads. So, so variables were perfectly OK. And they're the simplest way to do things. And code, code in which things like handles are hidden away in variables is terribly easy to read. OK. Not only that, it's terribly easy to write. Yes. Uh, so that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for this comment. We have a lot of more comments on Twitch and Klaus was the next one to raise his hand and then we're going straight to Twitch. Klaus, please ask a question. Yeah, that reminds me why I like to, to write force or use force. And I have the feeling that force is the only language that doesn't uh, put a straitjacket on me. I mean, in ways that I should express myself. So that said, uh, I have a question. Does anybody of you have experience of using Scrabble for stack, check, uh, stack manipulation while designing a complex function? <laughs> no, it doesn't seem so. But to, I mean, I haven't tried it myself, but the idea ah. came to me because we have all these letters so we can put semantics on a stack item and then we can juggle with uh, the, the pieces to while the stack changes. Uh, but didn't, don't you mean like Anton's talk? Pardon? Uh, Anton's talk about uh, type checkers. Uh, sorry, stack type stack checkers was going in that direction and or do you mean something else, Klaus? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I uh, when you start, you know what the function is should do. You know the inputs and the outputs, but how you get there, you don't know yet. 
And then sometimes you run into, unless you, you uh, apply the Dean Sanderson style with the variables, uh, you don't really often understand. I mean, the stack can get very complex. And so uh, I think Scrabble would help uh, the way I get around the situation by always using a single step tracer and, and tracing every word. I don't so I... see how, how Scrabble would help, but what I've done is I've written a prolog program that allows you to, to generate. Uh, so you have an input and output uh, stack picture and it generates the uh, stack um, manipulation words for the, the minimum amount of stack manipulation words for getting from the input to the output. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think, I think what people are always forgetting is it's, it's not a bad uh, use of use variables. Uh, people just sometimes, uh, including myself, it, I, I feel proud of writing super complicated stack uh, shuffling. And then I just think, well, even Bernd has used variables in, in, in concatenating three strings. So you should always ask yourself if Bernd is using uh, <laughs> variables, uh, he is clearly the, one of the best stack shufflers. Maybe we should just do that instead. Yes, yeah, so my my conclusion was basically if you want to need to go to Prolog to, to get your hmm. stack uh, manipulation, uh, I think you've gone in the wrong direction. My my take is if, if my stack becomes too complex but, uh, for me to understand, I probably haven't factored out enough one line out of the, the whole thing. Right, right. Um, it's, it's a few times uh, in the past year or two uh, that they really sat down and uh, wrote down lots of stack comments uh, line by line. But usually that's for me an, an indication that uh, my design isn't where it should be yet. Okay, let's go over to Twitch because people have been waiting there already. So Astrobe asks, what is the state <coughs> of force linters? <laughs> well, does somebody have an answer for that? So uh, uh, I guess... <laughs> Oh, uh, Stephen, you have an answer for a linter? Okay, go ahead. About 20-something years ago, we put a request out on the on our website for something we called Flint, which was a fourth lint. And there have been two or three attempts. And the, answer, the basic answer is... is Nothing has achieved production quality. However, the best formal description of how to do this came from Janos Poyal, some, but it's way too overcomplicated because he's an academic and he fr freely admits that it's made over complex in order to get money for his project. So, <laughs> but 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 Janos, Janos did actually publish some Java code, and I really suspect that the the problem with fourth linters is that everybody wants to write one from scratch, whereas I'm sure there's far far more to be achieved by picking up somebody else's code. Yeah, I also would argue the that there's person... a lot of Algol linkers uh, because with these languages it's much more like what style do you want? But you have just heard uh, Astro that people said here. Um, um, that people want to express themselves and Klaus said he can only express himself freely in uh, four. So if you would give four, uh, Klaus a linter, he would, I guess, throw it out of the window. So maybe maybe force is not the correct language for linters. I understand what you mean, though. It would be nice to just have the stack comments aligned and something like this. So, yeah. Um, on, on, that, on that note, uh, thank you again, Anton, for your stack checker talk and work. Um, and I really need to take a look into strong force. That's got me curious. Uh, Anton, do you have a special question or do you want to no, answer I the just question? I wanted to point to my talk about the stack depth tracker. And because um, um, uh, Philip sa said something about strong force, um, one thing, uh, one interesting thing is basically this strong force, I think, didn't get any traction because it was written for the 8086 in, I don't know, 20 years ago, which were at the time when the 8086 was already, I mean, ancient. Um, and um, he now, well, uh, a few months ago, I con he contacted me and he, he's going to 
uh, do a, a version for, I think, at least 32 bits. I don't know if it's going to 64 bits. So um, that, that may be more interesting than, than an 86 version. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the next question is Philip uh, from John Helmers. Uh, Philip, do you have an example where force is easy and where it is hard? Um, fourth was, uh, let's see. So fourth, I find fourth becomes hard as soon as I have three values on the stack, uh, where I would in uh, C or Python just have three variables. And I don't, uh, I haven't really adopted the locals or values uh, paradigm of, of modern fourth yet. And I really need to think what lies where and um, basically do the exercise that, that Klaus uh, uh, mentioned, um, keeping track of everything. Um, fourth becomes easy for me or easier uh, at the higher levels when um, I have I basically have a set of uh, set of higher level words. I'm already at least halfway into my DSL, or maybe already on my second level of DSL, and uh, the words are all designed uh, to e nicely communicate with each other. All the stack um, signatures match, and I basically can just plug them together, um, like um, they're all made to plug together, and I don't have to think too much about low-level technical details anymore, and I can uh, focus on the on the high-level algorithm, high-level uh, uh, structure. Uh, in, in in those places, uh, I find it becomes it becomes easy. Okay, thank you for answering that, Philip. I hope it answers your question, Sean. If not, please reply again. Then there is two statements by Astrobe. Force is simple, but not easy at all. But then that's a good thing. Like think before you code is a strong feature, in my opinion. <laughs> I see a lot of nodding there. Okay, wonderful. And variables, definitely. I think if you want an extra stack, it has to be a this or self stack. Sure, I guess there are also things like this, Astro. Maybe you want to look at uh, Bernd's um, object system. It has a separate object stack, for example. And uh, if you use that a couple of times and then you go back to a normal force, I would argue, a normal force, sorry, <laughs> uh, another, op another uh, op um, uh, object oriented force, I would guess you would have <clears throat> a harder time because now suddenly you have to shuffle the object on the stack already. So then there is something from Rick Alino. I've seen some interesting work being done with token based force, like retro force, which I believe was inspired by color force. Any remarks on that? And he, I just read all of him and then somebody we can remark on this, especially you, Philip. Uh, it, it doesn't have a linter, but it does have some features that venture into that sort of static analytic an analysis. All right, um, I think Howard had a, a, a talk about color force. You are right, uh, Rick Alino. Um, with color force, you definitely have at least some level of linting going on, I presume. Um, what else? Documentation finding which words are used by a specific program and so on. Mm -hmm. And John Helmer says, thanks, Philip. It is good to hear that experienced programmers experience the same challenges as I. John, you are certainly not alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I hope this answered everything. Are there, do you want to remark on any of that, Philip? Nothing to say there anymore. Okay. Uh, I don't see any more hands up in big blue button, which means we are all in agreement as always.